And ladies and gentlemen, we're in the, um, the home straight. We've just got 30 minutes left. Uh, we're going to do the Oscars of the industry, if you like. But perhaps before we do that, can we just have a stand up, please? You know the balls of your feet thing, I just need you guys to do a bounce. Remember, three times you want to get lucky tonight, four times if you don't. You got it, there you go. That's the one. Yep, the blood is circulating. All right, everyone feels good. Okay. Thank you very much. Lovely. So, um, just so you know, the food that was left over, and there wasn't a heck of a lot, but we've actually organised to donate that to City Mission. So thank you for not eating it all. Um, I think there's going to be some very happy recipients of um, some very fine food indeed. Anyway, Shining Star Awards. I just want to say that this industry has a bold vision for the future. We don't want to make the mistakes that big alcohol and big tobacco have made. We want this industry to start with a focus on better public health outcomes and to have the resources and the medical technology in place to ensure it. We want to make sure that we have fences at the top of the cliff, not ambulances at the bottom. We want to offer the world not just a future-proofed drug policy innovation, but a range of low-risk products within that system that all come with complementary neuronutrients available. The technology is here today, and it will be a reality tomorrow. This is the pathway that we are on, and this is why we must encourage, nurture, and celebrate excellence and leadership. We have three awards to give out today in the fields of research, advocacy, and retailing. And that's a, that's a world first, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so there's no one better qualified in the world to award a trophy for research than Amanda Fielding. She's come a long way. So I'm going to ask Amanda, would you please come up and present this award for outstanding leadership in the field of research. Thank you very much, Amanda. Well, however exciting policy is, I think the research is even more exciting because um, for the last, whatever it is, 40 years, it's been impossible to do research on these substances. So it's like going into an orchard full of ripe fruit, which no one's plucked. And um, great things can happen with very, yeah, it's a wonderful period for research. And I think it's, it's the tool to overcome the taboo, the research, and open up what are the possibilities of these substances. Um, now then, the Research of the Year Award recognises <laughs> a distinguished example of applied research that has or is expected to have an impact on health policy and decision making. Work that shares current relevance to contemporary drug issues, inspires and promotes continued excellence amongst industry peers. And the winner is Dr. Jeff Nola. Rather unexpected, I have to say. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. It's, uh, yeah, I'm doing um, some work with uh, Ibogaine at the moment uh, in New Zealand. Um, uh, looking at uh, the use of ibogaine, which is a West African uh, derivative of a West African herb to treat opioid dependence. Um, and the New Zealand ibogaine uh, is available uh, as a consequence of, of legislation, which has been a theme of this um, uh, event today, that uh, made ibogaine uh, prescribable um, as the, the, it's the only place in the world where it is. And, and so it's that legislation that has led to this research uh, and I'd also like to acknowledge um, Tanya Patterson, who's uh, actually the Ibogaine treatment provider extraordinaire, and, and without her, none of this would be happening as well. So that's actually for both of us. All right. Well, congratulations, Jeff. That's uh, very well deserved. 
Ladies and gentlemen, there's no one in the world better qualified to give an award for advocacy than Dr. Ethan Nanaman. Could I ask Ethan, please, to come up one more time and present this award for us? Thank you very much, Ethan. Thank you. Thank you. A asking me to talk about how wonderful advocacy is is a little self-serving. I mean, it's kind of my life. But you know, I reminded about 20 years ago when I was leaving academia to, to really become a full-time advocate. And, and I went to see a wise man whom some of you may have heard of named Ram Dass. Um, and Ram Dass, um, I asked for his guidance and thoughts. And one of the things he said to me is, you need to learn to let go of the thing that you're pursuing. There's what he meant, here I am trying to end the drug war, do all that sort of stuff, but that ultimately letting go of that, the, the notion that my value, my anything in life will be determined by ultimately whether I win or lose, was pivotally important. We pursue these struggles because they're the right struggles to pursue, because it's the right thing to do, and because it's a life, it's a meaningful way to live a life. And we hope and we strive to win. God knows we strive to win as hard as we can. But ultimately, it's the struggle, struggle itself that counts. So I think advocacy is, is just incredibly important. It can come from within government, elected officials, as like the ones we saw here. It can come from appointed officials willing to stick their neck out. And it also comes from people outside the government who press, who push, who get more sophisticated and keep the efforts alive till the days that government can change. So it's my honor to present the Star Trust 2014 Advocate of the Year Award to Chris Fowley. It would have been my honor to present the award to Chris Fowley. This is the problem when you want to surprise people with an award. <laughs> surprise, Chris. You just won the 2014 award for advocacy. Please come on up. This is truly an honor, everyone, and a total surprise. Um, geez. Uh, well, I really, I want to thank the Star Trust for really providing inspiration in this area. And I want to thank all our crew that work at the Hemp Store. And uh, yeah, thank you all for being part of such a cool industry. And um, uh, yeah, I think this is, uh, this is really good. I'm sorry, I'm just lost for words. I'm totally surprised at this. <laughs> It's not normally me, I can just talk for hours, but now I find myself kind of lost for words. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. All right. Thanks, Ethan, and uh, yeah, congratulations. That's exciting. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so the last award. And again, we're very fortunate to have the best person in the world to present the award for outstanding excellence and leadership in the field of retailing. Could I please ask uh, Mr. Matt Bowden, the godfather of the legal house industry, to come up and present this important award. <laughs> Mr. Matt Bowden. Thank you very much. My name is Matt Bowden. I make psychedelic rock music. You can find some on this flash drive, which is in your bags. So you turn it like that and it opens up. And um, I've also been involved with this industry now for about 15 years. Um, I'm a trustee of the Star Trust, and so it falls on me a little bit to, um, to say, to just to recognize the number of people here who've come from far away, from places such as uh, Israel, um, Hungary, um, Australia, uh, Canada, United States of America, m uh, people coming because they are, um, they maybe didn't think they were going to see this kind of a change in their lifetime, and they want to get right to the edge of the surfboard and see what's over the next wave. And so there's a special uh, round of applause for everyone that's come from overseas today. 
and I'm, I'm feeling really honoured to be able to be in the same room as so many progressive um, th and pragmatic thinkers. Um, it's, it's, it is an honour. Uh, so Grant's also asked me to talk just a little bit about, and a lot of people have asked me, what's going to happen next? What's the future? And um, so I'm just going to touch on where we started and, and where we're going. Uh, this whole movement actually came about from, um, uh, from consumers who realised that under the laws that we'd inherited, uh, we were, there, there were laws that we'd inherited from the United States and from the United Nations saying that it's, it's a crime for us to interact with nature. We, we, there are certain plants that we're not allowed to touch or consume, and, and it just um, really occurred to us that, that's, that that's, that's totally improper, and governments don't really have a right to do that. And so we realised that the governments had somehow, been, somehow made a mistake. And um, uh, when we looked at the laws, we, we saw that we, we wanted to develop safer alternatives to, um, to some of the drugs that were hurting people, uh, and we also wanted to progress policy along. When we talked to our government here, we said, you know, why can't we, why can't we change these laws around? They said, well, we've got pressure from overseas. We've signed on to this United Nations conventions and so on. So we thought, okay, the, the thing that makes us um, special as Kiwis is we can think outside the box. So we thought, let's go move outside that box and then we'll outside those conventions, and then we'll, we'll build a regulatory system, and then we can kind of s slide things into it. And we established that there was no regulatory system in the world so that you know, set up to uh, regulate psychoactives. So we realised if we can build a system, it'll, it'll be the first in the world, and it'll represent world best practice. And our goal was to develop that system here in New Zealand and then export it up to United Nations and out. And it's taken 15 years, but that's what's happened. And that's, that, that was really the vibe behind it, if you can catch that. So. Um, then what's happening next is that uh, for me, my heart has always been about um, it's been about harm reduction and it's about consumers. Uh, I'm not really excited about uh, the prospect of just making loads of money out of this. That's that's not really where I'm at. Uh, what excites me most about this legislation is that now it opens the doors for uh, the gateways of funding to come into research into safer technology. So now it makes sense for people to invest in safer technology in terms of um, improving your your mind state and your headspace without hurting yourself, which is what humans are doing when they're when they're using psychoactives. They want to get into a different headspace, either to party or to be able to think really closely about something. Um, and so that's what excites me most. So the next thing that we're going to do that we've already started doing is to initiate research into natural and nutritional solutions for addiction interruption, which means looking at nature and seeing maybe, maybe, this, maybe this plant has got a molecule in it which will um, substitute for some of the drugs which are being used. So if you take someone addicted to alcohol, methamphetamine, cocaine, synthetic cannabinoids and other drugs like that, uh, what can we use from nature to interrupt that addiction, block it, give people their brains back? The next thing that we want to do is we're going to start to me, the uh, the issue around retail needs to be um, there needs to be something else in there between the customer and the um, and the psychoactives. We'd like to see uh, clinicians put in place so that, particularly for some of the next range of psychoactives that come in, to check when the, the customer that comes in whether this product's really going to be good for them, whether they might be moving into problematic usage, and to put some management system like that in place. When people come in, if they've got into your store, if they've got addictions with uh, addictions to alcohol, methamphetamine, or other drugs, that you can address that for them free of charge by using new technology, and uh, for other people that they can access products that are safe for them. Um, that's where we're going in the next year or two. Uh, so the prize today is for responsibility. Um, it's sitting right here. This is for the retailer of the year. The Psychoactive Industry Training Association acknowledges a member that operates above and beyond the standards required by law and PETA. So really, where this whole bill has come from is from industry initiatives to move higher than the law and to set standards which are a lot higher, where the laws are a little bit behind. Um, we sort of value businesses who go out and out to value the, um, uh, the safety of the consumer as being far more important than the uh, potential for profit margin. And so we're going to just pick on a retailer who exemplifies that, operates above and beyond the standards, embraces all the components of the code of conduct and integrates them into daily business transactions, who excels in customer care, harm reduction and ethical retailing. And, uh, and the winner, hopefully is watching live from Spain, is Cosmic Corner. And today, we're going to ask Nell to come forward and accept this award, and also it's Nell's birthday today, so should we sing happy birthday? Let's go. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Nell, happy birthday to you.
there you go. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, Mark Carswell, the, the founder of Cosmic, is actually watching from the Spanibus Cup in Barcelona. Kia ora, Mark. Okay, so final words to wrap up. Um, perhaps it might be appropriate timing to also ask um, Sam, Liv and Ange, can they just identify themselves? You've seen them racing around here, they are. I just want to say, if you ever want to pull in a major event, uh, you could not work with a more dedicated, professional and good-looking team than this. Wouldn't you agree? Just put around a round of for those girls. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to all our supporters um, and contributors that made your goodie bags so good. Um, we acknowledge the Araha, and I'm sure that you're all going to love those gifts later. You know what? I used to wonder what was the roadblock between good science and good policy? And now I know that it's actually bad politics. That's the roadblock. And political rhetoric nurtured by media hysteria encourages and maintains the status quo. As agents of change, we reject the status quo. We reject it because for over 10,000 years of modern civilized man, we know that prohibition is a very rare event. In fact, it's just spanned 50 years of human history. For most of human history, we've had a normal and respectful relationship with psychoactive products, used for both spiritual enlightenment and recreational pleasure. Knowing this gives a healthy perspective to what can sometimes be a frustrating debate. And so I want to acknowledge the wisdom and the foresight of the original supporters of the Star Trust. No one could have foreseen how critical it would be to have a strong and vigilant organisation like this to defend the industry, but also to defend the act itself. And so I'd like to publicly thank Stargate International, Light Years Ahead, and Enjoy Products for their support at the very beginning to get us going. And to all the retailers that got behind our recent industry action to defend our right to trade, thank you also. It has been hugely encouraging to see this industry unite in its defence of this world-leading piece of legislation. Our mantra moving forward has to be regulate and educate. For all the reasons that we've heard today, for this is how we genuinely create better public health outcomes. Regulate and educate. Because educated people make better decisions, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why these conversations are so important. Lastly, the pathway to reform is not an easy path to take. It comes with bumps and detours, and we've seen a few of those recently. It's also a pathway that's forged and built by pioneers, genuine agents of change, many of whom we have heard here today, and all of whom acknowledge that in unity we have strength. And so we wish you well on your journey ahead. And we invite you to meet us again at Pathway to Reform 2015 on March the 5th next year. And we hope that you will join us stronger and more confident that this is the right path for the right reasons at the right time. Thank you very much for participating today. Thank you.